We've all heard of it. And most of us have probably tried it. My fitness pal still recommends it, as does Noom and Octavia. Don't even get me started. Heck, I'm still receiving article recommendations about implementing it. What is it? The dreaded, ridiculous, and debunked 1200 calorie diet. The calorie, as used as a nutritional measurement, started gaining acknowledgement in the late 1800s. By the very early 1900s, the term was a staple in the vocabulary when discussing health in the United States. And by the 1920s, America was somehow married to the 1200 calorie diet as the way to lose weight. So, where did this magic number come from? Buckle up, we're going to look into the history of the 1200 calorie diet. It all started with a book published in 1918 by medical doctor Lulu Hunt Peters called Diet and Health with a Key to the Calories. It was the first best selling diet book, and so began the wildly popular idea that calorie counting is the key to weight loss. In it, she describes the 1200 calorie diet as the way that she lost weight and makes a few many recommendations with the following distribution breakfast with 100 calories, lunch about 350, tea time 100, and dinner at 650 calories. A sample menu breakfast, 10 ounces of skim milk, lunch, a third of a head of lettuce, tablespoon of mayo with one chopped sweet pickle, and one and an eighth inch melted cream cheese, French roll, no butter, tea time, five prunes, dinner, one large tomato, slice of bread, double serving of lettuce, slice of lemon pie, no top crust, black coffee. Um, yum. She spoke to the patriotism of suspending one's calories. It was World War One, and rationing was in effect. Her diet ideas would make rationing easier, she claimed, and leave leftovers for the children and the soldiers. I have read this book, and it is wildly entertaining. If you read most of it as fiction, here are a few notable quotes. Now, you are to reduce your maintenance diet. The 2200 calories we are taking, for example, to 1200 calories. Quite a comfortable lot, you will find. You'll be surprised how much 1200 calories will be if the food is judiciously selected. You may be hungry at first, but you will soon become accustomed to change. Oh, yes. Yeah, you bet. Lettuce all day, every day is quite comfortable, believe you me. Another quote. You will have to choose whether you will enjoy yourself hugely in the 20 minutes or so that you will be consuming the excess calories, or whether you will dislike yourself cordially for the two or three days you lose by your lack of willpower. Mm hmm I love a good food shame game. This book is rife with morality statements. Good patriotic people are thin, and gluttonous overeaters with no willpower are not. Another quote. You may eat just what you like. Candy, pie, cake, fat, meat, butter, cream, but count your calories. Yep, uh-huh. The composition of the food doesn't matter, nor the impact on the systems within, like, hormones. Eat whatever you want. And as long as you don't go over this random number that I'm supplying you, you will lose weight. Let me be very clear. There is no evidence that 1,200 calories is a good idea or some kind of magic number that no matter who you are, no matter what your height is, your weight is, your activity level, no matter what you eat, you will lose weight. No evidence at all. A few comparisons to make you think. The caloric recommendations of a moderately active two to three-year-old is 1,400 calories. Hmm, that's interesting. So on this 1,200-calorie diet, we're supposed to sustain on less than a two-year-old. Huh. The caloric recommendations for a 55-pound adult dog, 1,250 calories. So we're supposed to sustain on a diet of less than what a 55-pound adult dog needs? Hmm. And perhaps the most startling, uh, the Minnesota Starvation Project calorie allotments, which studied the physical and psychological effects of prolonged dietary restriction, was 1,560 calories. Putting men into active starvation at 1,560 calories, while in the meantime, we're telling women, oh yeah, you betcha, 1,200 calories is the way to health. Follow me for some more terrible advice. Side note, some of the noted effects of the Minnesota Starvation Project increased depression and hysteria, emotional distress, unhealthy obsessions with food, declined sexual interest, worsened concentration and comprehension, down-regulated metabolisms, and reduced body temperatures. Wow, does that not sound appealing? It's not all bad. She does touch on the importance of water and sleep, and that nutrition should be personalized. I do think her forward-thinking intentions were spot on, but the approach in the extreme approach is where she goes awry. And her obviously disordered relationship with foods is very apparent throughout this entire book. I won't go into why 1200 is ridiculous right now. That will be a separate video. But know that you do need more than a toddler, and you do need more than a 55-pound dog, even if you're chasing a healthier weight. Until next time, you guys, eat more, eat well, eat happy. Bye!